So this is part two of the making a plane from scratch. And in the last video, the last minute and a half or so, there was no audio. I don't know what happened. Somewhere along the line of the upload, it just didn't upload that section. But what I was telling you was that the plane was on the tree still, as I call it. And I was going to cut that off. And then I was going to paint these black. Now, you don't have to paint brass, obviously, because it's, you know, a great material. It doesn't need to be painted. But I like the look of black brass and rosewood. I think that really looks good. So I paint these black. To do that, I, I media blast these very lightly and that etches the surface which allows that paint to stick better. So for this video, what we're gonna do is we're going to machine the sole, square up the sides, open the mouth up, and then we're going to machine the seat for the iron, drill for the pinch pin, tap for the tote and the knob. And that'll get us ready for the next step. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna machine the sole flat. To do this, I use a two and a half inch carbide tip face mill. The face mill allows me to machine the whole sole in one pass versus making multiple passes with a narrower bit. The sole is not very flat when it comes out of the casting process. So it'll take multiple passes with this face mill to get it now. I end up removing about an eighth of an inch. I take very, very shallow cuts and I've only got this end mill spinning at about 500 RPMs. I don't want to get a lot of heat built up. That can warp the sole. And I've removed the guard just so I could film this. Normally there's a guard in place that keeps those shavings from flying everywhere. But with that guard in place, I couldn't film it. And then one final thin pass, finish it off. I'll end up going back and machining the sole one more time once I open the mouth up. But this gets it nice and flat. And we need it to be flat so we can square the sides up. And there's the finished product. I use the same face mill to do the sides. The sides need to be machined at a 90 degree angle to the sole. And you can see that they are not right now. This is because of that drafting that was talked about whenever I was casting it. It allows you to pull that pattern out of the sand. And each pass removes that drafting. I'll end up taking about a sixteenth of an inch off of each side. Slow passes, not very deep, and I don't want to let heat build up. I've got this thing held in the vise against the back jaw. I know the back jaw is a dead 90 to my end. Rate. Then we'll flip it over and do the other side. This also ensures that my two sides are parallel.
and there's the finished product. Both sides are 90 to the sole. Here I've marked the bottom of the sole to give you an idea of where I'm going to cut the opening. I use a 1 8 inch slitting saw to do this, at least the first step. This gets a majority of that mouth opened up so I can go in there with another end mill bit, clean it up, and then do it by hand with a file. The final mouth won't be 1 8 of an inch wide. That's how wide the iron is. But thanks to Mr. Pythagoras and his theorem, we know that since the iron is one eighth of an inch thick, the actual grind on it will be wider. And here I am with that end mill opening up the ends. The slitting saw can't get completely across it, so this allows me to clean those corners up. To complete the mouth, first, I have to machine the seat for the iron, and to ensure that I keep it at a dead 45, I made this block out of aluminum to assist. I use a quarter inch carbide end mill to do this. In the cooling process, the seat for the iron is not flat, there's actually a little dip in the center of it from the cooling of the molten metal. And one final pass to clean everything up. Here I'll get real close to those sides. And make sure that that iron will fit in there nice and snug. I don't want a lot of slack in there whenever I seat that iron. And then I'll test fit the iron blank to make sure it slides in there nice and smooth. I'm going to machine the sole one last time. When I machine the seat for the iron, the leading edge of that will be exposed when I do this. And that tells me where I need to file to. Here you can just see that line that was cut by that end mill when I machined the seat. And machining the sole exposed that cut. That's the leading edge of the frog. Here I'm just going to file down to remove that little piece that was exposed whenever I machined the sole. This also squares the corners up of the mouth. Rounded corners don't work very well. Then I'm going to go through and clean the seat up with a file as well. Brass is soft, so you got to be careful and not overdo it here. And you can see I've got leather on the sides of my vise so I don't mar those sides up. The iron slides right in. Very little play. The location of the pinch pin is crucial. If it's not right where it should be, the cap will not tighten down the iron correctly and the plane won't function. I've scribed these lines on a rejected casting to show you.
this line is actually the seat for the frog, which is at 45 degrees. The next is the iron, which is 1 8 of an inch. Then the chip breaker, which is a 16th. And finally the screw cap, which is a quarter. The pinch pin sits inside the screw cap one half the diameter of the pinch pin. I've then scribed a line down the side of the sole or the side to the sole and inscribe that line up the other side. This allows me to locate the location for that pinch pin accurately. When you slide the pinch pin in, it should be parallel with the mouth. If it's not, then the iron won't seat correctly. And you can see here that I've got those two lined up and you can see it is perfectly parallel. This is crucial to the function of this plane. I drilled a hole for the pinch pin with a 1 inch end mill. You would think that you could just take a 1 8 inch drill bit, drill through one side, and then go on through the other, but it doesn't work that way. This side is flat, and you could drill this side pretty easily. The other side, because it's drafted from the casting process, the drill bit will wander and will not go in straight. So I drill them from each side, one at a time. I then pull it out, flip it over, locate it with those lines, tighten down the vise, and then drill this side. And you can see that pinch pin slides in perfectly. I drill the hole for the toe at 15 degrees perpendicular to the sole. And you can see I've got blue tape on there to tell me when to stop. You don't want to go all the way through it. I tap these by putting the tap in the drill bit and spinning it by hand. This gives me a good start. It's easy to get these things out of whack. I'll then go over to my vise and finish that up with a bottom tap. It's a 632 threaded rod that will go in there. And again, brass is very, very soft, so you can damage these threads if you're not careful. The knob's the same process, only it's not at an angle. I start it with a drill press by hand, Make sure that those threads are lined up then take it over to a vise with a bottom tap and finish it by hand. So here's our finished body. All machine started out like this. Pretty rough. First thing we did was we machined the sole and then squared the sides up to the sole. Then we opened the mouth, machined the seat for the iron, drilled the hole for the pinch pin, and then tapped for the tote and the knob. The next video will involve making a iron out of this O1 tool steel, one eighth of an inch thick, one inch wide, as well as a chip breaker from one sixteenth inch thick O1 tool steel. A screw cap from one inch wide by one quarter inch thick brass with a stainless steel set screw. And then we're going to make barrel nuts to fit the tote and the knob. The tote screw is 632 stainless steel all thread. Same thing for the knob. Once we get all that done, we will take this piece of 
Bolivian rosewood, we will make a tote and a knob. I hope everyone enjoyed watching this video. It's starting to come together. You can see actually now it kind of looks like a plane, albeit missing some pieces. But in the next one, we'll take care of that. So thank you for watching. And I'm going to get started on this stuff right away and get the next video out there.